In this video, we will learn to describe the structure of the human axial skeleton. We will learn about the function of the spinal column, the skull, and the thoracic cage. And we will learn about the types of joints most commonly found in the axial skeleton. The adult human skeletal system consists of 206 bones, as well as all of the joints that connect them. The skeletal system is a feature of some organisms called vertebrates, specifically mammals, reptiles, birds, amphibians, and some fish have bony skeletons similar to ours. The skeletal system is adapted to serve a number of functions. Our bones are the site of blood cell production and they play a role in our immune system. They store certain ions and minerals. And maybe most importantly, the skeleton is the internal support and framework of our bodies. The bones of the skeleton give the body shape, allow movement, and protect our most delicate and important organs. The human skeletal system is often divided into two sections, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton contains the bones of the appendages. In humans, those are the arms and the legs. The appendicular skeleton also contains the bones that are responsible for connecting these appendages to the torso. The axial skeleton contains the bones found along the vertical axis of the body. The axial skeleton contains the skull, the thoracic cage, also called the rib cage, and the vertebral column, also referred to as the spine. Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the axial skeleton. We'll start with the skull. The human skull is a structure composed of 22 different bones. The large round portion of the skull is called the cranium. The main function of the cranium is to protect the brain. The cranium contains several plate-like bones that are particularly hard and strong. Some of these bones are the frontal bone in the forehead, the occipital bone in the rear of the skull, the parietal bones that cover the largest lobes of our brain, and the temporal bones found near our ears. The bottom of the cranium has an opening called the foramen magnum. The word foramen refers to a natural opening in a bone. The foramen magnum allows the spinal cord to connect to the brain. The front of the skull contains several irregularly shaped bones called facial bones. Some of the facial bones are the bones found in the orbit or socket of the eye, the zygomatic or cheekbones, and the two small nasal bones found in our nose. The facial bones support and anchor all of the muscles of the face that allow us to speak, blink, and communicate using many different nuanced facial expressions. Attached to the bottom of the front of the skull is the jawbone, also called the mandible. Within the jaw, we find our teeth. The teeth are often considered to be a part of our skeletal system, but teeth are not made of bone. Teeth are harder and more rigid than bones. They are also not able to repair and mend themselves when broken, the way that our bones do. The skull can also be divided into an anterior and a posterior portion. Posterior is a word that means rear or behind, and anterior means front or forward. The term posterior skull typically refers to the bones of the cranium, and anterior skull typically refers to the facial bones and mandible. Next, let's take a look at the bones of the thoracic cage or rib cage. The thoracic cage is also commonly called the rib cage. The thoracic cage serves several different functions. It connects and supports the bones and muscles of the arms and upper body. It surrounds and protects the delicate tissue of the lungs and the heart, as well as other vital organs like the liver and kidneys. It also connects and supports the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, which allow us to breathe. The thoracic cage consists of the bones of the ribs, the sternum, and the thoracic vertebrae. The ribs are 12 pairs of curved, flat bones. They stretch from the spine in the posterior of the torso 
to the sternum in the anterior part of the chest. The ribs are connected to the sternum by a special type of cartilage called costal cartilage. The bottom two pairs of ribs are shorter than the others. They are referred to as floating ribs because they do not connect to the sternum at all. The sternum is also commonly called the breastbone. It not only attaches to 20 of your 24 ribs, but also serves as a point of attachment for the arms through the two clavicle or collarbones. The thoracic vertebrae are the 12 bones of the spine that connect to the ribs. Now that we've reviewed the anatomy of the thoracic cage, let's move on to review the anatomy of the spinal column. The spinal column, also called the vertebral column, stretches from the base of the skull to beneath the pelvis. The spinal column supports and protects the delicate spinal cord, which is responsible for relaying messages to and from the brain. The bones of the spinal column are called vertebrae, and there are 24 individual vertebrae in the spinal column. The top seven vertebrae are called cervical vertebrae. Cervical is a word that means referring to the neck. Beneath these, we find the 12 thoracic vertebrae. We've already learned that the thoracic vertebrae each connects to a pair of ribs. Next, we have the five lumbar vertebrae. These are the vertebrae of the lower back. Attaching the bones in the posterior of the pelvis, we find the sacrum, also sometimes called sacral vertebrae. The sacrum is a plate of five fused vertebrae that are generally considered to be one bone. Dangling beneath the sacrum is the coccyx, also sometimes called the coccygeal vertebrae. The coccyx is a set of four tiny fused vertebrae, also commonly referred to as the tailbone. Each vertebra has a unique shape. The vertebrae become larger and thicker as you travel down the spine, and they're thinner and more delicate near the top. This is because the lower vertebrae support more of our body weight than the upper ones do. Even though each vertebra has a unique shape, they all have some features in common. This diagram shows one thoracic vertebra viewed from the top. Towards the anterior side of the bone, each vertebra has a section called the body that stacks together with the vertebrae above and below it. Each vertebra has an opening called the vertebral foramen, which is the space that the spinal cord passes through. And in the posterior of the bone, each vertebra has at least one extension called a process. These are the anchor points for tendons and ligaments that support the body and allow movement. Joints are what we call the connections between two or more bones. There are three major types of joints in the human skeletal system, and some are more flexible or movable than others. The three major joint types are synovial joints, cartilaginous joints, and fibrous joints. Synovial joints are highly movable. These joints are cushioned and lubricated by a special type of fluid called synovial fluid. In the axial skeleton, you will find synovial joints where the skull meets the spinal column and where the jawbone attaches to the skull. Cartilaginous joints are partially movable or mostly immovable joints. The bones in these joints are connected to each other by cartilage. Some examples of cartilaginous joints in the axial skeleton are the connections of the ribs to the costal cartilage and the joints between each of the vertebrae. Fibrous joints are immovable joints and tend to have very little flexibility. These joints are held together by tough fibers. Some examples of fibrous joints found in the axial skeleton include the suture joints between the plate-like bones of the cranium. These stiff and tough joints stitch the bones of the skull together into one rigid protective structure that houses our delicate and important brain. The joints of the axial skeleton generally tend to be less movable than the joints you find in the appendicular skeleton. Now that we've learned about the anatomy of the axial skeleton, 
as well as the types of joints we find between these bones, let's try a practice question. What are the components of the axial skeleton? A. The pectoral and pelvic girdles and the bones of the arms and the legs. B. The vertebral column, the limb bones, and the pectoral girdle. C. The skull and the pelvic girdle. Or D. The vertebral column, the skull, and the thoracic cage. This question is about the skeletal system and it's asking us to recall the components or parts that are in the axial skeleton, which is a part of the skeletal system. The adult human skeletal system consists of 206 bones, as well as all of the joints that hold them together. The skeletal system is often divided and described in two sections, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton consists of the human appendages, which we call arms and legs. The appendicular skeleton also contains the bones that attach the appendages to the torso, and that includes our pelvic girdle as well as the pectoral girdle. The axial skeleton contains the bones that fall along and around the central axis of the human body. This includes the bones of the skull the bones of the thoracic cage, also called the rib cage, as well as the bones of the vertebral column, which we also call the spinal column. This means that the components of the axial skeleton are the vertebral column, the skull, and the thoracic cage. Let's wrap up our lesson by taking a moment to review some of what we've learned. In this video, we learned about the structure and the function of the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the bones of the skull, which are the bones that protect the brain. The thoracic cage, which protects the heart, lungs, and other vital organs, as well as the bones of the vertebral column, also called the spinal column. These bones protect the spinal cord.